All right, everybody. Since Robert Wright was nice enough to make a lovely piece of propaganda, I figured we could be nice enough to review it and uh, see what kind of lovely stuff Robert Wright is up to and what kind of fear he's doing for the midterm election. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at this, shall we? In a number of states, a battle is being waged over so-called right-to-work laws, which should really be called right-to-work-is-wrong laws because they're so bad for workers. Right-to-work sounds harmless, but it's not. Consider All right, so his first claim off the bat is that right-to-work hurts workers. Okay, we can't even get 30 seconds into this before we start the fear, propaganda, and, trying, and everything else. One thing I need to stress, pro-worker, pro-union. They're not necessarily the same thing. I realize that's the dichotomy and fallacy and, quite frankly, fear he's trying to instill into you, but that doesn't make it true. There are times where being pro-worker is anti-union, and there's times where being pro-union is anti-worker. Now, being pro-worker is not a bad thing. Pro-worker is a good thing. The problem is, Robert Wright is less interested with this piece in actually being pro-worker and more interested in being pro-union, regardless of the consequences to the worker. Consider these facts. The average worker in states with right-to-work laws makes 12.2% less annually than workers in states without right-to-work laws when all other factors are removed people in right-to-work states are less likely to have health insurance and pay more out-of-pocket for insurance. Okay, so right there off the bat, his first two major points, you know, the whole workers make more and benefits and so on and so forth. Okay, this sounds great out of context like this. This really does. But let me give you a scenario. Would you rather A, make $10 per hour to pay your union $2 per hour to be a union member, B, get paid $10 per hour to pay your union $1.50 per hour for administrative costs to not be a union member, or C, get paid $9 per hour, take all of that home, pay your union nothing to not be a union member. Basically, would you rather have $8, $8.50, or $9 in your pocket? Robert White's trying to make us about would you rather have $10 or $9 an hour. Now, I realize I'm rounding this down to 10% error as opposed to the 12, but I'm trying to keep the math easy on y'all so y'all can follow the logic. It's the same thing with the benefits. Would you rather your union negotiate with your employer and then take an administrative cut to basically have your wages garnished and a bunch staken out for benefits and so on and so forth, or would you rather just have a net pay result so that after you pay for all these benefits, there's more money in your pocket? Now, this is really what right to work is all about. People are increasingly running into the situation where unions are raising their dues 10% plus. This is becoming a common thing. And a, a lot of that isn't going to the worker so the contract with the union is actually becoming uh, destructive to the worker. Uh, workers don't like this. They're like, wait, what? what, what? It, and I can't stop paying you? You're like the government? You own me? I'm your slave? So let's continue into his other points. Let's, you know, let's let him make some red herrings. Uh, so be, uh, have a little bit of fallacy and you know, get us all afraid, right? Right to work states have higher poverty higher infant mortality, less investment in education, and higher workplace fatalities. So why do right-to-work laws hurt workers in all these ways? Because these laws destroy unions. That's their purpose. Oh, that all sounded super, super scary, right? We're, we're gonna destroy the unions. <gasps> be afraid, be very afraid. Oh my God, it's, it's, it's the unions are failing. Well, the unions have been failing for a while, actually. This has been coming for decades. Um, and, and, you know, th this is... But, you know, what's a little propaganda without fear? If you take a second to really think about all those things he tried to scare you with, it's actually the perfect example of why a lot of people, including a lot of workers, especially low-wage workers, directly benefit from right to work. Look, 
I get it, okay? Super uber, more senior, pro-union, drank too much liberal Kool-Aid people think poor is bad and whatnot. But the thing people from that point of view can't understand is that those of us who operate on the, the lower totem in terms of raw income and other stuff actually can survive and live better than paycheck to paycheck and struggle on and push through provided y'all don't say, well, you need rich people bills. You need union dues and high taxes and high fees and high costs and you have to live the high life. No, 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 that that doesn't help anybody. That makes things worse, a, a lot worse. Um, and it's just, no, it, yeah. Um, so, he, he says destroy unions. And frankly, that's hyperbolic. It's very hyperbolic. Uh, it would be more accurate to describe right to work as workers escape abuse by unions. Now, that gets taken to an extreme by anti-union, okay? That's not what right to work is about. Right to work is not anti-union. It's anti-union being in a position of power to abuse workers who do not benefit from being part of a union. It's taking away a union's power to harm workers. They have to actually help workers to maintain membership. What a crazy concept. So let's go back to right. Here's how. Under the National Labor Relations Act of 1935, when a majority of workers votes for a union in their workplace, they're entitled to have a union. And that union bargains with management for higher wages and better working conditions. The union has bargaining clout because all workers at that company are union members. That's what union means. Right to work takes away the rights of workers in a union to collect dues from everyone in the bargaining unit who benefits from the bargains. I I'm sorry, but that's a little misleading because it's not for all workers. It, it isn't. What a union actually does is they come in and say, okay, everybody's a group because 51% of us said we want a union. Uh, it may have been the 51% that were the worst workers. So now they're entitled to a fair share of uh, what everybody puts out. Um, and they're going to create all these rules that guarantee they get more work and they get more benefits uh, without doing any more work. Um, that's, that, that is also hyperbolic, but let me give you my experience in a union shop. Okay? Um, for situations, I had more experience than other workers, and I was better at my job than other workers. But per union rules, you know, I, I'm at the bottom. You know, I, I don't have seniority and everything else. So the reality is, if we didn't have a union, I would have had more work. Overtime would have gone prim would have gone to me before it went to people who either show up late, don't want it or quite frankly aren't as productive you know um, but the union said they need to get the overtime before I get it um, people who were earning more than me needed to get overtime before I got it and 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 how the heck is me giving up part of my paycheck to be denied shifts at work remotely helping me as a worker that's insanity, but that is how a union works. This is this is a real reality. Um, th th there's a whole other scenario here, and he's he's basically inferring, okay, that all of these dues you're paying are going towards negotiating on your behalf and securing benefits for you, and 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 and. and. Well, he's full of crap or he's deliberately deceiving you, or he's just ignorant. Uh, because here's where at least some of your union dues go. Well, to pay your union bosses, usually a lot better than you, in some cases better than politicians. I, I kid you not, you are paying union dues in some cases for your union bosses to get six, seven-figure salaries. 
Hey, this is a good thing. Why? Why is this money not going to the workers? Why is it going to the administrators and all that? What? You know, it's the evil CEOs. It's also the evil union bosses, okay? All those argue any, any argument that you could ever make about the evil corporations and making too much and so on and so forth, you can make the same argument about union leadership and union administrators. They are the evil fat cats, too. Right to work is about screw them. They are not entitled to leech off the workers to enfatten themselves. They have to actually do something that makes the workers want to pay them these high salaries. Or they have to cut their damn salaries so that dues are in line with what workers actually want to pay. Crazy idea, right? In addition, you are paying for unions to go to K Street to lobby. And then I hear Wright's going to go on this whole rant about the evil corporations are lobbying to crush unions. Well, I hate to break it to you, but unions in a lot of cases and a lot of the recent elections have actually spent more than their corporate overlords. They're taking money from the little people to spend on big fat paychecks for themselves and lobby legislators to give them more power over the little people. Stricter laws, crush right to work. How dare you let those people not give us more money? <gasps> Again, it's a little hyperbolic, but it's reality. There's a lot of union money going into this. <sighs> you, you mean that's not being spent on making life better for the workers? It's being spent on, you know, the, the general bullshit of abuse of power as usual? Unfortunately, very so. Um, and the other thing is, what they're doing with a lot of those dudes is basically, like I said, lobbying to have more power over more workers. You know, to come up with ways to make it law that people who they help in no way, shape, or form have to pay dues so that they have even more money to lobby for even more power. Wasn't this supposed to be about workers? Why are we supporting groups that do this? Why do we need to... Why, why are we against laws that strip them of their abuse of power? Where they actually have to give you something for giving them dues? I, yeah, let's go back to right. I'm sure he has an answer for this. Chamber of Commerce and the corporate-backed American Legislative Exchange Council are pushing these right-to-work laws because they claim they care about workers. But who are they trying to fool? The Chamber of Commerce and ALEC don't care about workers, they represent corporations. The truth is, their corporate sponsors don't want American workers to have the bargaining power they need to get higher wages and better hours and working conditions. The Chamber and ALEC say right-to-work states attract more businesses. The truth is, they attract businesses that seek lower wages. Businesses that don't invest in their workers, don't do research and development, don't add value and therefore are the most likely to go abroad for even cheaper labor at the slightest provocation. It's bad enough American wages have been stuck in the mud for three decades while corporate profits have soared and top executive pay has gone through the stratosphere and that almost all the economic gains have been going to the top 1%. So-called right-to-work laws are part of this problem and are making all this even worse. The only way average Americans are going to get a fair share of the gains is if they have more bargaining power as they did 50 years ago when a third of all workers in the private sector were unionized. Now, fewer than 7% are. We have to increase, not reduce, the bargaining power of average people. So don't be fooled by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the American Legislative Exchange Council. They want to lower your wages so big shareholders and top executives can rake in even more. I was wrong. He just had a bunch of the same old uh, talking point hyperbolic arguments where he was just theorizing and flinging. Remember what I told you a second ago. Every argument you make against the 1% and the evil corporate overlords, you can make against the evil union boss overlords. Did the majority of, uh, of wages and increases and so on in the last decades uh, go, to, go to union workers or union bosses? Ah, see, the trend's the same on all sides, people. They want to protect their power and abusing it over you. In addition, I cannot stress this enough. Right to work is not anti-union. It doesn't say you can't form a union. 
It doesn't say you can't pay union dues. It doesn't say you can't collective bargain. It doesn't say you can't do any of this stuff. Right to work at its most simple. It, it, it was previously established that, you know what? You are not a member of the union. The fact that 51% of your workers decided to form a union and you were one of the union, one of the people who didn't want to be part of a union, who the union actually hurts. Okay, okay, but they're doing collective bartering on your behalf. So here's the way this is going to work. It's a union shop. You have to pay them admin costs. Now what are admin costs? Well, whatever the hell they say they are. Um, so if they're the same as, you know, 75% or 90% of the member dues, well, that's admin costs. Um, and that's recently been challenged in the courts, um, and the courts agreed that, yeah, that doesn't make any damn sense. Yes, <laughs> you shouldn't have to pay them unless they're actually helping you. Your membership in a union should be voluntary. Not, not, we're not bashing unions here. We're saying unions are only going to keep the members they help or they appeal to. That, that's what it's saying. You, the worker, have the right to join a union. Not the union has the right to lobby the legislator to make the government turn you into the property of the union. You know what? If your workplace is abusing you, and, 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 and. I'm a big form a firm believer in collectively working together. So, yeah. You should either go form a union or go form a collective that goes and basically creates a competitor to your bad boss. Fire your boss. You know, fire your boss or make it worth your boss's time to negotiate you. That's capitalism, people. It's, it's sold as something else, but that's exactly capitalism. Basically, when it gets bad enough that people are like, this shit sucks. I have more to gain by going on strike or going across the street or opening my own place. You know, that's when a union's good. When a union is taking money out of your pocket to stop you from working, hinder your ability to get a promotion, pay for your political opposition, and for the people who are controlling you to get better paychecks while you get worse paychecks, you should have the right to fire that union or form a competing union. Nobody said you can't have two, you can't have two unions in the shop. You know what? Our union sucks. Our union does a lot of bad stuff. To, to, I'll put this in, in terms of HOAs. All right? What right to work says is it would be wrong for the HOA three blocks over to charge you dues because you live in the same city and as a result of them being just the most hoity-toity, snuck up, how many inches tall the grass is HOA, well, they've improved property values on average for the city. Therefore, you must pay them HOA fees. They're improving themselves, not you, not your house, not your neighborhood, and a lot of people would rather fire their HOA. What Mr. Wright has completely missed, and a lot of people who are still in the pro-union camp, especially the older people, is that unions have changed. I'm not saying there's no good unions, but in a lot of cases, the unions are not pro-worker anymore. They're pro-union power, pro-union boss power, pro-lobbying. Uh, pro, pro unions care more about their super PAC and their power on K Street today in some cases than they do about the actual workers they're supposed to represent. We have had court after court after court ruling where workers have had to go get an attorney, sue their union, and the judge looks at the bylaws of the union and it gets bylaws. Unions are a form of corporation. And all the shit, and like, you guys are getting screwed. Fire your union. Fire your union bosses. Have an election. Call for an audit. It, it, it's, and this isn't lobbying. This is just what unions are doing. They're screwing over the very people they're supposed to be protecting. That's why this is trying. This isn't corporate union. I'm not saying corporations aren't going to win if we go completely de-unionized. But this is coming from the place of workers are tired of fucking being abused. And I apologize for my language.
be pro worker. Do not blindly be pro union abusing worker. Peace. Hi everyone. You made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. Almost no one does. At least that's what the analytics say here on YouTube. Uh, you know, since you made it this far, you might want to consider going one more click and expanding that description down there and go ahead and clicking over to Patreon and become a, you know, patron and contributor. Uh, if not, you'll also find it over in the channel page, but hey, regardless, there's this like-dislike thing, so by all means, downvote if you think I should shut up, or upvote if you'd like to hear more. And uh, if you really feel inclined to do, at least you can do a subscribe, but hey, up to you.